Hi, welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morten, LB0 Fox India. And today I want to talk to you about a very easy to build DX antenna, which is perfect for new hams, which haven't found their favorite band yet. Or people who want to go out portable and just needed a simple, compact, multi-banded solution. So what's this magical antenna? you ask. Well, first of all, there's nothing magical to it. It's the Ribicuff. And a Ribicuff is a relatively simple antenna design. I've talked about the Ribicuff. I've shown you the Ribicuff before. I've taken a deep dive into my first commercially made antenna, which was actually a commercially made Ribicuff, the Magitenna by Mike Zero CVO. And a Ribicuff is basically a 4 to one on on it's 7.6 meters of radiating wire going vertically and vertically as the important point here. It does not perform really well as a sloper or as a flat top, but it performs excellently going vertically. Guess there is some magic to it nonetheless. And then underneath that, you'll have a radial net. Pretty simple, isn't it? Well, I've been dragging it along the... Uh, Mike Zero CVO Magitana for a while, but it's uh, an antenna made for a permanent installation and it's not the perfect portable antenna. It's it's huge, it's heavy, it's not compact, so it takes a little bit of work to set it up. But for Support Your Parks Weekend, which was a couple of weeks ago, depending on when you watch this video, um, I decided to make a compact version of the Rebekoff and I'm sure you could do this yourself. Uh, if you're a new ham, if you're an experienced ham, it doesn't really matter. I'm relatively sure that you'll be able to make this antenna yourself. So let's head over to the workbench and uh, take a quick look at that antenna. And we're over here at the workbench. And what you see, the basis of the antenna is the Ham Radio Dude Winder. You can find that on Thingiverse. I'll link it down below for you so it's it's easy to find. You can print this yourself or you can buy one from Ham Radio Dude. Um, I'll link his store as well down in the, uh, in the description here. I printed mine myself in purple PLA because that was the filament that I had on hand. Uh, besides the winder, you're going to need... Uh, in my case, uh, T43-140 toroid. You're gonna need some kind of antenna connector. I used a BNC because I had a spare BNC connector. And you're gonna need a um, little bit of hardware, nuts, bolts, and, um, and ring connectors. Or you could just solder everything. That doesn't really matter. But it, it's pretty easy to, to build here. So let's take a look at the antenna. Uh, the toroid here is wound with eight bifilar turns here with uh, enameled wire. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when you're done winding those, what you do is you take the two center connectors, you solder them together, they go into the antenna connector here. Then you take one of the other connectors, which goes over here, and I'm, I'm gonna show you in more detail. But this is the, um, the driven element connector here. And you have the ground plane connector here. One of those goes to the uh, driven element connector. And you can see what I've done here. This little connector comes down here. And if we turn it around, it just continues on the back side here, it comes up this hole. And the enameled wire just goes over here to a ring connector to this nut and bolt here. And we have the driven element on another bolt. I could have just soldered everything together, but this is so it's it's easier to, to service the antenna if anything should happen in the field. As for the counterpoise side, that wire comes off here, goes through the ground lug of the uh, BNC connector here, and into a ring terminal. So this is connected bo both to the ground side of the BNC and uh, the radial net connector here. As for the radial net connector here, I've done like I usually do on my antennas. I use power poles for this. That's just to short be short piece of soda beams wire here with a power pole connector here. And then I can hook up. Let me just get it. 
this radial nut here also with a power pole connector which i use for all my antennas which requires a counterpoise net so i can use this one for for a variety of different antennas what do you also could do is just solder the counterpoise net straightly to the ground connection here but i've decided for a modular approach here so it's relatively easy to to build um, the hardest part for me was actually winding the torrid as you've probably seen in a lot of my videos winding torrids is not something i really enjoy doing but as you can see i get better at it it actually looks halfway nice so let's get back to to the studio here and we'll discuss a couple of things with the antenna so what is it with a uh, rubicuff that makes it a great antenna there's a couple of things here First of all, this is a random wire type antenna, so it's multi-banded. It's a non-resonant antenna, which means you need to use a tuner with it. But that's, for me, it's no issue at all. Uh, use your radio's internal tuner or use some kind of external tuner. I use the ATU100, which I have a hard time recommending because I'm on my third ATU100, and the one I got now works. I bought that used from another ham. Because there is some quality control issues with those Chinese tuners, but you can use any tuner you want. If it's automatic, if it's manual, it doesn't really matter. Just to bring the SWR down to a level where the radio is happy. So the multi-banded thing is the first thing that, that is good with this antenna. The second good thing is that it's compact. It's a vertical antenna. Uh, the ground or the radial net that I use uh, consists of uh, eight five meter radials, which I can just lay out in a fan pattern, uh, depending on where I am. Uh, if I go 360 degrees or just 180 degrees, 90 degrees, I don't see a lot of difference on how I deploy the radial net as long as I spread the radials out and, uh, and leave them around somehow. But it doesn't take up more than, at the, at the smallest part, five meters of ground estate, which in some parks can be essential for you. Um, besides that, you need a 10 meter pole. You just string it up on top to the top of the pole. <laughs> you raise the pole until you have the feed point a little bit over ground, and then you're good to go. It tunes from 40 to 10, and you probably should be able to get it tuned on six as well. But that's not the important thing, though. How many bands you can tune an antenna on doesn't really matter. But does it work? Can you get any DX on it? Well, let me show you a couple of clips from Support Your Park Weekend, and then I'll go back and, and show you the map of the Saturday activation for Support Your Parks Weekend, and you can draw your own conclusions from that. India, Lima, bravo for Lima, India. You're uh, uh, five and four into Norway there, QSL. Yeah, Kilo to UPD. This is uh, Lima Bravo for Lima India, the second operator at the park uh, with uh, Morten here. Over. Kilo Alpha, you're about uh, 5 and 4, 5 and 4 into Norway there, Joff. Uh, over. Yeah, Roger, Roger, Roger. Good afternoon, Hugh. Yeah, signal's not too good. You're about a 5 and 2. 52, 5 and 2, okay? Yeah, thank you for the 5 and 2. And I have a second operator together with me, so uh, please hold so you can get them in the log as well there. Uh, correct. Golf 4, Foxtrot Kilo Alpha, this is uh, Lima Bravo Zero, Foxtrot India. 5 and 4, 5 and 4 into Norway, over. Delta Oscar 3, Bravo Oscar Bravo, thank you. About a 5 and 5, 55 there, Olaf, over. Thanks for the 55, you are also 55 near the Lake of Constance, near Frederiksberg. QSL, QSL, thank you for the 5 and 5 near Lake Constance, and thank you for hunting, 7 3. Have a nice weekend. And as you could see from these three short clips of QSOs, um, didn't really film any of those days. It wasn't about making an activation video. We managed, on Saturday, we were two operators, managed 28 QSOs in about an hour. From those <laughs> 28 QSOs, I'm just, I gotta look down at my cheat sheet here. We managed three continents. We managed Asia. We managed North America with three Turkey, which is Asia. And we had uh, two Canada and one United States. Plus a 
bunch of European contacts. So, so that works. I also went out on uh, on Sunday on the Support Your Park weekend, uh, where you can see one of the clips from the car made basically contacts all around Europe. But considering bad conditions lately, getting six D really DX contacts, three continents on an activation as we did on a Saturday, that proves to me that this antenna works. Radio-wise, as you saw, we use the IC706 Mark IIG, which is a 100 watt radio. That probably helped a little bit. And uh, we used the ATU100 for tuner, as I spoke about earlier. But th this works. So let me know, is the Ribikov the perfect DX antenna for a new ham? Or is it just a good DX antenna for a new ham? Or do you think it's a terrible antenna? I'd like to know down in the comments down below, let me know because I'd really like to hear your opinions and if there's something we hams have, it's opinions. So let me know down in the comment field. Also, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate that. And if you can't afford it, I have some ways to support the channel financially down below. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this little short talk about the Ribicuff antenna. Hope you enjoyed this video format. See you down the bands. See you in my next video. Until then, 7-3.